What's up, everybody? Today we're going to be doing a database review from Dooley, a community member. Let's have a look at your stats. Click on position. Uh, you want to do last month these 75,000 ads, or you want to do all of them? Uh, last month is probably a better sample. Okay, good. Um, just because it represents my play a lot more accurately and how I usually play, you know, like, and how many tables, etc. All right. So first off, you're going to give me a quick filter. Okay. We're going to look at your game under 20 big lines. So top left, hit quick filter. Yeah. You want to, you want to just control my screen instead? Um, yeah. If you want. Can I? So we're doing a database review? Yeah. I cannot click things. Weird. Do you see the mouse moving? Yep. This is last month already. Yeah, I cannot click. Okay, let me let me let me try doing something. Oh. Yeah, I can like I I can click on Windows, but I can't click on the data. So quick filter, yeah. Hang on, this is gonna be. Yeah, can you move now? Should I have uh, control of the screen, the, the mouse? Okay, there you go. Uh, filter editor. Okay, effective stack, aerial stack, instead of any, uh, less than, than 20 big lines. Wouldn't it be less than 21? Oh, yeah. it could be less than 21 as well. Okay. All right. You're, you're losing, Dooley. All right. So. Well, I mean, it's only 20,000 hands. There's a lot of variance at 20 because you're doing a lot of jamming. Now, well, if we looked at this last month uh, with all the stacked up, we had really, really clean stats. But when we got to shorter stack, now uh, we are a little bit. Uh, so the first thing you want to improve is your big blind defense for 20 big blind and less. Pull up the notepad. So start a new page, database. So write down big blind defense for under short stack, sub 20 big line, you are at minus 40. Minus 40? Yeah, you're all in adjusted big blind for 100 for the big blind at this time. Oh, oh, that, that. Okay. okay. So you could make it minus 30. Oh, you're clearly not V pipping enough from the big blinds only it's less than 30 that doesn't seem like it can be right it might be too yeah. many so your all in is minus 40 right now and we this is the number one spot we want to improve because of your short stack and then you know the shorter you get your chips matters a little bit more so and the number one thing i, I would want to want you to work on is like a big blind defense uh for 20 big blinds so the way you do that is like you set up gta wizard for 20 big blind stack and then you just train the big blind against all the table a lot of against the button probably but also all the table louis what's wrong with his big blind defense how did you determine that there was something wrong with his big blind defense the minus 4 dev big blind per 100 uh, it is a, a little bit low uh, it could be better Right. What what numbers are you using as a benchmark? Uh, I'm using uh, the book from Michael Acevedo, which is Modern Poker Theory, in which he provides like a chart. Uh, and that chart gives us guidelines for like uh, um, players that are breaking even, players that are losing, players that are winning, players that are very big winner and the, the, the super crusher. And then you can you can compare your numbers with uh, the the ones from the best players in the world, and you see where differences are. 
and then you what? can train uh, this portion of your plate to be a little bit closer to uh, what the super crushers are doing. Perfect. Thank you. This is on the on his book. Yeah. Okay, I have the book, but I haven't read it yet. Ah, uh, there's a lot of gold in that book. So for my EV at zero to 21 big lines from the big line is minus 5.62. So you could definitely improve on that. Yeah. Uh, if you check out the last test article uh, that I published uh, for poker coaching, uh, the sub chart is in there. If you want to look at the at the lobby, uh, look at the, the study session on, on poker coaching. Poker coaching, study group, scroll up a little bit. Scroll up, scroll up, scroll up, scroll up. Uh, dealing with a downswing, exactly. Click on that. And then exactly, bingo. So this is from Michael Acevedo's book. Uh, I highly suggest that everyone grabs a copy. So as we quickly saw, um, oops, there you go. Like the large winners, uh, they get their big blind win rate down to minus 30, okay? So look at the first, the first box, the very first one. The large winners, their big blind is minus 30. Yours is minus 40. It, it's closer to a break-even player, right? So if you get, if you improve your big blind win rate here, uh, it's, it's gonna take you closer to, to like where you should be basically. Okay. Uh, this is like a reference for a six max table. Is it okay also for a nine max table more or less? Yeah, it's just a guideline for win rates based on position. But if you look at on your older manager tree, like the positional report is, is six max as well. Uh, yeah, right. So, okay. Uh, then the number one, the number two thing that I see, if you look at the button, look at the button, look at the win rate from like a break even player from the button. So 28. Okay. And you're at 20 here. Okay. So the button is the number two area I would try to improve on okay so button under 20 21 big line your ev is 20 it should be 30 and 37 can I, sorry can i'm I just have, moving rooms can i have something yeah uh what i see from his stat is very static he's uh, pretty much opening the same from uh, ep than uh, b from a button it's 20 from the ep early position and 22 from button yeah you're right that's something as well it's a very static range yeah You want to be like closer to 30 or even 35. Like the best players in the world, they get 30 or 35 from it. Okay. And then, like Eric mentioned, if we look at your pre flop raising from the button, it's only 19. So there's probably not many King Seven off in there, right? Right. Like, do you raise? I do. I do fold that hand. Actually, what? Yeah, and that, that, that. Yeah. So, uh, you want to probably like uh, work on your pre-flop game for the button for the stack that as well. So, an interesting thing you could do, Dooley, that I've done in the past um for myself and with people i've helped with these database analysis is when you're missing a like a large sloth of your rfi you can isolate portions with a range explorer um of the opening range like i don't know the floor of the offsuit or the floor of the suited 
and you can see which portions of these, which portions of the range you're actually missing a lot of. It's interesting. I actually looked at this spot in HRC yesterday because I, I thought I wasn't opening enough from the button. And it's be, it's when like uh, button is say button and big blind say around equal stacks, 40, 50 big blind area, whatever. And the small blinds say like 10 or less. Mm. What I saw is that the button range doesn't like a chip EV, the button open range doesn't really change that much. And what was wild is you don't fold like anything when they jam either. Like yeah. it was a very small percentage of small folds, very, very small. Right. Uh, one thing I am noticing right away, Adul, is that you're folding to tree bed around 35% of the time. Uh, I think that's a little bit sticky. It should be 40. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're calling uh, three bets way too much. Especially against, you know, like in in theory, that's closer to okay, but uh, against our opponents, like if anything, you should find a couple extra folds, right? Yeah. Uh, like in general, people don't don't really bluff that often when they three bet. So if you defend at GTO, it's already like not so good. But if you over defend, it's definitely a leak. But if he played this range, it's pretty normal that is not uh, folding. Uh, he should not fold as much as as we should. You know what I mean? Well, more and less because we're gonna like we're not not gonna compound on mistakes. We're just gonna fix his pre flop range instead, and then fix like what goes along, which is like folding to three bets in general. But sure, if you got a good hand, I mean, you're not going to fold, right? Okay. Now, 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 now. What is this stat called? Okay, so Dooley, I close yep. your notes. Click on the tracker. On the right side, there's a book. Click on the book. Um. Try to write down OOP. I mean, that was a good point Eric made. If he's opening tighter ranges, he's not going to have as many folds. Yeah. Uh, scroll down. Scroll and down. I think the 20 big font effective uh, changes that frequency too. So what I'm looking for here is bet out of position adds up. So scroll down a little like bit. Like on the flop? No, no, no. Uh, yeah, no, no, yeah. Well, on most streets, but uh, ah, okay, flop C bet. So you have it. So scroll to the right then. So close this and then scroll to the right. Okay, flop C bet out of position. <laughs> Okay, so 20, 20, 20, and then 60. Okay, so already, okay, from, from this stack depth, from the cutoff, uh, you, you, like the cutoff is not betting 65% of the time. Okay, when, when you're like raising from the cutoff and then the button calls and then you're out of position, uh, you're, you're never betting as often here. So you, like you're betting too much out of position adds up. Way too much. From the cutoff. From the stack bet. Now, 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 now. What is a good number for this? Because I think is my one of my league too. Uh, it's around the forty percent max. Thirty-five, forty, yeah. Yeah. So the tracker. Luli, I want to see the tracker, not Ape Styles cheat sheet. Uh, scroll to the right. 
So your button are RFI, like clearly that's not good, but we already have it. Uh, cutoff, probably not good either because 24 is too, too short. Yeah, I checked, it's like over 40 somewhere. Yeah. And then, um, okay, why do you only, uh, like from the button here, it seems like you're only C betting 47% of the time on the flop. Like you're C betting only 47% of the time. You want to know what my number is here? Closer to like 70, probably. Yeah, my probably number, I think, I think it's around 80%. <laughs> okay, because uh, like in position, there's many, many spots where the button is just going to range bet, right? So you need to find more range betting from the button. So... Yeah. Like overall, you're betting the flop only 23% of the time. You see your bet flop percentage? And then when you're in position, it's only 50%. So if somebody has a HUD or is paying attention, so you're, you're only betting the flop when you like, it's kind of simple, right? Because you're, the portion, the equity portion of your range is always going to be around 30%, uh, then 30% of bluffs, and then 30% nothing. So when you see somebody who's betting flop 30, 35, 40%, or close to these numbers, like the flop, best, flop bet is too honest there. I could chime in with an example. With this exact setup, I have I see bet 91% from the button heads up. Yeah. And hold on, it works. They fold 64% of the time, there which is a drastic mistake on their part. Yeah. It just prints fucking EV. So, like, if you see bet more, you're going to win more chips. So, that's going to bring up your, your overall EV already from the button. Is he bet on the turn? Uh, on the turn, see, on the turn, it's, a, it's better, right? Because uh, on the turn, like you're more around 60%, that, that's kind of closer to what it should be. But then again, uh, you don't double barrel often enough from the button. Yeah, that's, that 60% C bet is easy because the, the, Flop C bet is so low. Yeah. You, you, you're not putting yourself in enough hard positions. Yeah. yeah you don't earn, you don't barrel enough. You? you don't see bet enough. You don't double barrel enough when a good card comes. You're too comfortable. You're not you're stealing enough, position. basically. So steel, steel is a big weakness uh, from, from this tag up. I mean, honestly, looking at my HUD, I don't see any reason to ever check that as much as they fold, as much as they overfold, I don't really see a reason to even check. Yeah. In my games. What are you getting uh, for folds, Ken? It's still on, on both directions, by the way, Duli. On both directions, because you don't steal enough. And the thing that happens the most when you're defending your big blind is you're facing a steal and your big blind win rate is not high enough. So it's steal for both directions. You want to play against steal from the big blind and you want to be the stealer from the button. And the population doesn't check raise enough either. So they're so face up when they check raise. So you get in the, you know, tougher tables. Um, okay, show, show, show us the, the tracker again. Scroll to the right.
Okay, very nice, very nice. So, Duli, I want you to write this down, okay, in your note. You do, you should, whenever you face a river bed, okay, and you're out of position, like either from early position or from the small blind or the big blind, you should close your eyes and fold. <laughs> Do you see I your river call efficiency, Dooley? Yeah, I don't know what these numbers mean. I kind of just added them because... Uh... Yeah, okay. Well, overall, you're... Okay, so it's very clear. Better like, than mine. Like, you, from the button, you're slow playing too much, okay? That leads you to have a, a river call efficiency of, like, almost four, which is really bad. That means you're not betting for value. You're slow playing too much. And then you get to the river with a super strong range, and then it's easy to call. And when you make that call, you make a lot of chips. Hmm, okay, that's that's good. not good. And then if you look at your river call efficiency from, for example, the small blind, look at the first one. So what that means is 0 0.25 is that whenever you put one chip calling on the river, you get 0 0.25 back in average. What that means is whenever you, you call one chip, you win 0.25 back. Okay, so if you didn't make the call, it, it would be one, right? But now, since you're making the call, your, your call is so bad that your chip is divided in three and four, and you only get a quarter back, okay? So you're... Whenever like you're out of position, somebody bets into you, you should just close your eyes and fold on the river because uh, your, your, your river call efficiency is very, very bad. The minimum you should be at when it comes to river calling is like one. At one, you're breaking even. You pay, you call one chip, you get one chip back. Okay. I think bluff, it might be a problem with some small much. sample sizes because uh... So overall is 1.65. Yeah, but it's just because he's slow playing too much from late position. I mean, fair. Yeah, he's talking about small blinds pretty bad. Actually, mine is 1.8 at 20 effective, so it's not too bad. But yeah, small blinds bad. Louis, would yeah, you I talk haven't really, about I haven't really done my river call from different positions. That's a that's a good thing to look at. Yeah. Louis, would you talk more about um, what happened? about how high your river call efficiency shouldn't be? What, what number is too big and why? Uh, around two, uh, it's roughly the guideline from what I know, okay? So like you call one chip, you get two in return. Even two is a little bit high, okay? At two, you're starting to slow play a little bit. So guideline is above two, you're slow playing way too much. And under two, like you could do a little bit better. And that's both in position and out of position? Yeah. Okay. And like one is break even. So like uh, if, you, if you're at one, that means you're 50% of the time right, 50% of the time wrong. So you're like, uh, it's not your best place already. Right? You're a solver. But yeah, exactly. But if you're under one, you have a big leak. You should just close your eyes and fold. And, and it's tough, right? But at the same time, population doesn't bet for tin value often enough on the river. They love to trap and they love to slow play. They love to trap. So when they trap you, they're not betting for tin value, you know? So if you're out there making these calls, why? while like uh, people don't bluff this spot. Well, <laughs> it takes a really, really good player to bet like for 10 value on almost every spot on scary boards and everything. And like, unless you're against a big, a very good player, I mean, you, you shouldn't call too much. So that's nice. That was for a sub 20 big blind. Now show us between 20 and 40. Make it the uh, twenty one forty two. 
Shouldn't it be 19 and 42? No, nah, that's good. Doesn't really matter. It's just to see how, how you play a different stack up. Okay, so already we can spot pretty much the same leaks. Okay, if you look at your all-in adjusted big blind per 100 from the big blind, they're at minus 50, okay? So like big blind defense right now, I think should be your priority. Yeah. Should, that's all you should do. So like 40 big blinds. How often do you check race from the big blind? I bet you it's super low. Oh, it's probably non-existent. That's not good. It prints. When you learn the right uh, combinations on certain textures versus certain opponents, it's it's or positions, it's pretty good. I mean, mine's still low, and I do quite a bit, but I'm still too low, but it, it's good. All right, so for this stack depth, your overall VPIP is pretty low, like 2315, 2415, that's a little bit low. Um, you're not raising enough from the button or the cutoff, that's for sure. You need to work on your steel, on your steel from, from that stack depth for sure. Uh, scroll to the right. Hang on. Okay, that's that's a lot better. So see your flop C bet out of position here on the left. So like uh, the first three. Flop C bet out of position percentage on the right on the left. Really. Move it to the left, 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 left. Oh no, don't scroll. The, the, the column is on the left. The fourth one. Oh, it's on the left. Yeah, the fourth column. Fourth from the left. Fourth from the left. That's fourth from the right, do we? Huh? Did oh, you see? Oh, oh, <laughs> oh there God. <laughs> there you go. Welcome back. Uh, so see here, it's around 40%. So that's already a lot better. Okay. Um, your button raise for thin is not good. 31% here. And cut off RFI, not good at all. Scroll down. We're at 40 big blind. So button and cut off RFI, not good. Last line, yeah. Okay, you got it. Never mind. Uh, show me the database again. Okay, scroll to the right. To the right again. See, you see a river call efficiency here? Like even in position, now you're struggling. Like when you're deep stack, whenever you make a call from the button, uh, you're losing money, okay? So whenever you're not slow playing somebody, basically, and you make a river call, uh, you're losing chips. Like here, your river call efficiency is better, right? But it's still not good enough, especially from the big line. Let's see another leak here. His resteal from the small blinds about half what it should be. Yeah. 
He's only three betting uh, versus late position steals, like 10%. It should be like, I don't know, 18, 20. Uh, the big blind as well. You, calling from the bottom, but also from the big blind. So, yeah. And also from the ball, from the big blind. Yeah, that's good. Um, what else? So, from what we see here, like Ken said earlier, uh, like your, your, if you look at your flop uh, check raise, it's around 9%. Could easily be double that. This one, right? Yeah. It's at 9%. Uh, GTO is around 20% on some textures. But it could be a lot more. Like, uh, you need more check raise. Some textures, it's fucking really high. <clears throat> but overall, yeah, not, like not, 20. Not, not only from the big blind. That's true. You, like, first off, you bet too much from out of position, and then you don't check raise enough. Yeah, yeah you, can't, you can't check raise because you bet everything. Yeah, exactly. So it's, a, it's very often like two leagues are, are going to be linked like this. Here. Now, do we show us above 40 big blinds? Like 40 big blinds plus. Actually, show us from 40, 41 to 60. 62. Make it 62, yeah, something like that. That's good enough. Yeah. Now scroll to the left. See, do you see your button win right now? It's getting closer. Look at your average EV here. When you're deep stack, you play a lot better. Dude. Now you're a winning player. Now it's a lot closer to like a... So with base... You probably do well early on in the tournament, but when it gets deeper and deeper and you, your stack gets shorter, uh, you don't do well as much anymore. So you need to train your short stack because your deep stack game is a lot better than your short stack game. You, okay. Your button, uh, you raise about... more, you raise more from the button, your RFI is higher. Your, look at your big blind win rate, your EV, minus 20. That's some sexy numbers. That's some very nice numbers. The small blind win rate, minus nine. That's some very nice numbers. Okay, probably because you've been training that big blind with us, like, if, because this is what we do a lot, right? Yeah. So, but here, your button win rate's not high enough. You want to make it more like 30 here. I, th I think when, uh, we, I think when uh, you, you, uh, you get shorter, you want to preserve your stack when you are 20. You don't want to uh, to uh, to see bet when you have nothing because you want to preserve your stack. That's right. Yeah, I think I think I'm uh, I'm just playing a little bit more scared when I'm lower uh, when I have less chips. Okay, Taking less chips or whatnot. Button, you need you need a better win rate from the button, and then show us your river call efficiency. Oh God! Oh, so zero. So especially from out of position. So from the stack there, you should bring up the notes. So from the stack depth, from every position, you should just close, uh, no, from out of position, mostly, uh, you should close your eyes and fold to every single river bet you face. No, 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 not every raise you face. Every single river bet. 
Jesus. Okay. That means like you have like a, it's kind of a strong hand, right? You have like a two pair, but the flush completed, or like a, you shouldn't trust yourself here. Don't trust yourself. Don't this trust seems you. like this. This seems like you have you have sixty beggars, and you're like you ain't bluffing me. Yeah, on. exactly. Don't trust yourself here. Okay, you should just. Go. <laughs> People don't bet for ten value often enough. Yeah. You know, one, one thing you can think of is even if you perceive your hand to be very strong, you should don't not listen to yourself and always fold. We should filter for these spots and uh, see what you're calling with. Yeah, we can, yeah. We can look, but it's it's yeah. Yeah, the idea is just find these spots where you get here with a marginal made hand and fold all of those first. Yeah. Then find your ones with your weakest top pair. And consider folding those more. Yeah. And you know, just kind of build the structure of your uh, river value based on your hand strength. And when you realize you're at the top of your range, consider calling. And when you realize you're at the bottom, a hundred percent fold. And when you're in the middle, strongly consider folding. I always like to think about if I'm blocking bluffs or unblocking them, I mean, that's a little bit more down the road. But if you're blocking bluffs and you have like a marginal pair and you're blocking bluffs, it's really bad. Also, the, the way I think you should play it is unless you have a mark on the guy that says this guy is, plays bunker poker and is absolutely out of line all the time, you can't call. Simply right. automatically right. fold unless you have a note. Okay. Yeah, I agree with that. The, I feel the, like I get the good results just assuming that they're all like every third pot C bot C bet is weak and gonna fold, you know, to aggression. Every two thirds pot C bet is super strong. Like every three bet is has half as many bluffs as it should have. Yeah, like even people that try to play that are studying somewhat and try to play well are still going to struggle to find enough bluffs. Yeah, exactly. Uh, now show us above 60 big lines, anything above 60 big lines. 62 to 200. Now scroll to the left. Now look at your win rate here. Like very good numbers. You're you're playing really good. You're running good. So at the beginning of the tournament, you're doing well. Yeah, your win rate is not good from the 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 later later positions. Still the same story. Like look at your PFR here. Like your button PFR is just ridiculous. Sixteen. Yeah, you got to make your even. You want to make your money in the, the cutoff and button. That's the two positions where you need to be printing money. Yeah. EV. <clears throat> you can't do it if you're not opening the hands. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know about HF3, but P24, you can actually filter and bring up your VPIP range from positions to see what your hands are, what combos you're actually opening. And in a range, like it's the, it has the range visual, visually. Yeah. Check, check your river call efficiency, do we? See, still, still very close to zero. Like from the big blind, you should completely avoid calling rivers from the button and the cutoff as well. Cutoff or button. Yeah, believe a guy once in a while. Yeah, oh, I believe them every time. <laughs> <laughs> 
Especially when they triple. No, enough people don't triple barrel bluff, honestly. Yeah. They can fly unless you're, up, unless you're up against Louis, then yeah, never but, believe. Exactly. Most it's really it. Most decent players can find two barrels. They struggle with that third barrel when they're getting called and they don't have shit. Yeah. All right. Well, his deep his deep stack play is really good. It's better than mine. Yeah, like uh, early in the tournament, he does better than in the later stage. I always end up punting off my stack. Well, Dooley, you got a lot to work on now. So pretty for nice. Sure. I'm gonna invite you to move to our Discord uh, and train for what we just learned. Awesome. Thanks a lot for watching, you.